Mm-hmm. Warming up because it's so warm. Yeah, it is. I, I regret not using the air conditioning. Live stream has started. The show starting in a few minutes. We are manually resharing our links. So if you are watching this right now, uh, can you please put it on the monitor? Double checking if audio levels, yes, audio levels are moving. We will start in a few minutes. Yeah, so if you are tuning in for the live stream, we'd appreciate if you could like this video, share with your friends to help get more people to join. If you are watching the recorded version of this in our future, like the video anyway, <laughs> and subscribe for notifications. <clears throat> so yeah, give us a moment as we like do the sharing thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my back sore. And then I hope the internet holds up because it's been really crappy today. Okay. Monitor is running. <laughs> YouTube and Facebook are running. <laughs> Oof, that cartoon had a great theme song. <laughs> Wordless theme song. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I've done my sharing thing, and then... Huh. Well, that's distracting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I guess we can officially start. Oops. Links here. have been shared. Monitors are running. It is a warm Thursday night. And we'll be right back. Talk slower, talk slower, talk slower. We'll be <laughs> not ready. Okay, I'm back not, after I'm... this intro. <laughs> Why do you end up sounding like you're in labyrinth? Smell bad. Plastic. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. One moment. This is Toby. And this is Rahi. And if it's your first time here, welcome to Buddy Pride, our little space on the internet where we talk about anything we want. This is completely unscripted and not entirely accurate, but at least it's honest. Join us as we talk about everything and anything random live. And if it's not your first time here, thank you so much for joining us again. To this Thursday, we're talking about fandoms. And this time, we're talking about something that, that you really got into... And we dug all over different trips to find a way to collect it. Yeah, so we're talking about the adventures of Tintin. Yay! <laughs> so, okay, then I feel guilty because I, I take it that Tintin was not... No, wear shirts. We have to show shirts. Yeah, yeah. We so have it... to yeah. These are, but, oh my god, it's like so big now. And they're like, they're like old. They're like, yeah. well, they were like one of our first couple of years. Yep. And no longer as white as they could be. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, today was actually a suggested topic, by the way, by Pico, and I hope that he can tune in or catch the recording at some point in mm-hmm. time. Um, it's but, possible he's still at work. Yeah, that's why. So it's like, but hey, thanks for the suggestion. We super appreciate it. Mm-hmm. We're, I know it was quite a while ago. We're finally going to talk about Tintin. So um, Tintin, what do we talk about? How do we uh, get so this how, started? Um, I guess we, we have to define Tintin All for right. the viewers who might not know about sure. it. Sure. It's your turn to define because this is like... It's Rocky's birthday week. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like not as excited. Admittedly, the the first few days, in as much as I wanted to like make it birthday week, birthday, just too much work. So just no so energy. Much work. And then now the headlines like, are not great. The, and then and then the internet's more. been so weird. Yeah, it it is, has not been enough for both of us to be on calls at the same time all day. It's a long week, guys. But it's still your birthday week, and uh, let's. Talk about Tintin. All right. So The Adventures of Tintin is a series of, and it's funny because I always think I just say comics, but it's uh, they label it as Bande Designé albums created by Belgian cartoonist Georges Remy, who uh, wrote under the pen name Hergé, mm-hmm. which is, uh, I always wondered about that. And um, so it was one of the most popular European comics of the 20th century. And then by 2007, a century after Hergé's birth in 1907, Tintin had been in, had been published in more than 70 languages mm-hmm. with sales of more than 200 million copies and had been adapted for radio, television, theater, and film. That's insane. I have not heard the mm-hmm. radio plays, nor mm-hmm. have I seen any of the uh, stage productions. Um, and, and, and it, so what's this all about? It's largely about, uh, set in the 20th century, your hero is Tintin, who is a courageous young Belgian reporter mm-hmm. and adventurer, aided by his dog Snowy. Uh, other allies that he, you know, gathers along the way is Captain Haddock, um, the intelligent but hearing impaired Professor Calculus, uh, the uh, detectives, sometimes Interpol operatives, whatnot, Thompson and Thompson. Mm-hmm. The P, there's a P in one of them, um, and and other folks. So that's like that's like Tintin. Did you ever inc- I I you know and I feel bad because I didn't check like mm-hmm. before. Like what's your level of exposure to Tintin before I exploded into your life? It was it was a lot of stealthily reading books that were available in the library. Okay. Because I always saw it as one of the more expensive books. It they were. Yeah, they were, they were expensive. expensive. And at the time when Ooh, you, you, now I want to pull out an issue. See, okay. At the time when you can like buy a comic book for 25 pesos and I'm dating myself on how okay. long ago that was Keep talking. when a comic would be around 25 pesos. Tintin was already in the hundreds to 200 range for a book. So it was like... Okay, and I'm not going to be able to pull it out. It was like way too expensive to be something to consider getting when when I first encountered yeah, it. Yeah, I, I shall help get it for you. No, 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 don't, 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 don't. No, no because get. wait, because I don't know which issue still has a price tag on it. Yeah, so don't okay. don't yeah. get it anymore. But okay, I think there's anything within reach. But I know it was about like uh it was already close to 300 pesos per glossy issue. And they're big. They're like they're very they're very, very big comics. Mm-hmm. I remember my very, very first uh Tintin book was a was a gift mm-hmm. on my eighth birthday. Funnily mm-hmm. enough, a classmate of mine gave me a copy of Destination Moon, and I had no idea who Tintin was at the time. I had never read the comics. I didn't really notice the comics in the in the in the bookstore, mm-hmm. despite us going almost every other week. Um, but then once I did, it's like, oh my god, this is hilarious. And I uh, I, I super, I super went nuts over it. I, I, I think I literally. This is what the one of the, a period in my life where I read something and I literally laughed out loud mm-hmm. because it was so funny. There were it, bits that were. Destination so funny. Moon was the one with the red mushrooms, right? No, Destination Moon is when they built their rocket to go to the moon, mm. which is, uh, which had a direct sequel title, which is uh, Explorers on the Moon. Okay. okay. Uh, the one with the mushrooms is the shooting star. Yeah, the shooting star. Okay. 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 So, um, so, what is a Tintin book like? Um, it is it is a huge like magazine style thing, nice high class mm-hmm. glossy paper, and oh my god, so many words. 
I mean, they had very, very detailed dialogue mm-hmm. uh, at the time. And then the other thing that always stood out about Tintin is that while the the characters were very stylized and you know very cartoony in mm-hmm. to some degree, um, there was an unusual amount of detail for yes. buildings, architecture, and machines. Hergé had a thing for machines, and mm. his depiction of cars, tanks, airplanes in all of the comics was amazingly detailed like like accurately detailed it's mm-hmm. it's wonderful and i i think it always stands out so even uh, as much as like the rocket in destination moon was super science fiction yeah. like science fiction of the time and we're talking about you know very early period before the actual space program um but it all made sense and there was mm-hmm. just so much work put into it okay so uh, in in the times that you did get to read Tintin before, what did you like, or what stood out for you for Tintin? Bringing down the light a bit because we're like super glowing. Okay, okay, yeah, because we're in white, <laughs> we're in white. so we're reflecting more. Okay. Um. So I I remember snippets. I remember uh, brief visuals of stories. Um. I'm I'm trying to look now at the titles to see if any of them help. Um, if you can describe scenes to me, I bet I can figure out which one. So definitely there was the there was the submarine one. Okay, yeah, which was um the submarine that looks like a whale. Yeah. Yeah, so that was Secret of the Unicorn and Red Rackham Stretcher. Mm-hmm. That that's where the submarine comes into play. Yeah, I remember the red mushrooms that kept growing around and, and Snowy kept oof. looking around and getting shocked that they kept appearing. Yeah, they literally kept exploding. Um I sort of remember an opera singer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nightingale. Ooh. And then I think there was one that had the focus on a painting. Although I can't quite remember. That is probably also related to the secret of the unicorn and red rackham treasure. Mm-hmm. Because there there was a that was a big treasure hunt thing. Okay. So um and, and going through, like, so Tintin was, you could argue, almost a, a Mary Sue mm-hmm. in the sense that he was just brilliant. He's a reporter who got all these opportunities to travel around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't the strongest, but he was a decent fighter, handy with a gun when mm-hmm. needed, um, and all these things. And was just an all around adventurer. And he would find his way into trouble and out of trouble, um, and it it's it just really what de, de, you know defined the series. Mm-hmm. Um, I always had a special place in my heart for Snowy, mm-hmm. the dog, because in the comic he talked, mm-hmm. and he was ah, uh, but it was like he talked for the benefit of the audience, of the readers. Yes, yes. So uh, it was a bit of a fourth wall thing. It's why my nose is suddenly itchy as we're talking. Mm-hmm. Um, that uh he was very sarcastic and he'd be like grumbling and complaining aloud with whatever Tintin was making him do and all these things and it was just a weird source of humor and and that leads me to the other thing that always I remember about the Tintin books it was a weird contrast between like high stakes adventure I mean Tintin fights everyone from gangsters international mobsters Mm -hmm. almost James Bond villain level characters Mm -hmm. Um, and then, but on the flip side, they also kept the books very funny. And I don't know how Hergé managed to find that balance without, you know, diminishing either side. I mean, you look at the detective characters of Thompson and Thompson. They are identical twins. They are detectives, but they're not great. And yet, I don't know how they remain employed. Mm-hmm. As as Interpol agents, so they supposedly had an only discernible difference in the shape of their mustaches, which is like I never could pick it up. Which is like part of the fun. Like they, they were never, first introduced yeah. in Cigars, Cigars of the Pharaoh. Yes, and they provide much of the comic relief in the series with a lot of their chronic spoonerisms. Yeah, so they always have just like all the, which is like a a, a running gag in the series. And my credit to whoever handled the English translation for mm-hmm. Tintin, because Tintin because it was created by a belgian uh was not originally written in english mm-hmm. and yet 
uh, work was done so that a lot of the humor and the phonetic translated. humor translated. Because the same thing happened with um, Bianca Castafiore, the opera singer. Mm -hmm. She could, the running gag was she would never get Captain Haddock's name correctly. And it goes always, oh, Captain Padlock, oh, Captain Wedlock, and all these things. And she would use a different term for his name every single time. And it always rhymed mm -hmm. with Haddock, um, which is brilliant. Captain Haddock was interesting because he was a later character. And like, uh, because I read uh, Destination Moon first, then I was introduced to pretty much the full cast of characters right mm -hmm. away. That by then, the cast was pretty stable. But if you go back to the beginning, it was just Tintin and Snowy. And then eventually, Captain Haddock gets brought into the story as a side character. And in fact, He's like on a ship run by the villains. Mm -hmm. And it you so you think that you're not going to see him again. Yeah. He's like one of those characters that you don't expect to see him again, but then he just gets dragged into the adventures more and more. And then they get stay connected. And then things happen. And here I am trying not to spoil a series which is older than many people who may watch this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, but then he becomes part of the core crew. Then your last weird main cast is Professor Calculus, who was like super subtle. I mean, like he just, again, he felt like a background character. Mm -hmm. He was just the literal absent-minded professor. But then uh, he became part of the group. And then thus his, his moment of glory was, uh, I, I feel, is still Destination Moon and Explorers on the Moon because he invents the moon rocket. Or mm -hmm. he, he is part of the team that creates the moon rocket. Okay. Ah, all right. So that's like that's like the comics. For for reference, there are oh my god, how many books are there? There are twenty four books. Mm -hmm. And oh, for the longest time, if you if you were like me who bought them like well in the nineties and stuff, then the back of the Tintin books would would show you a catalog of, of all every the other single book. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. But distinctly, which is not something I realized until later in life, is that. It starts from the second book, uh, the third book, Tintin in America, mm. and ends just short of the final book, uh, which is Tintin and the Picaros. Because, of course, Tintin and the Alf art is an unfinished uh, manuscript published after his death. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a weird cropping of the thing, only because, admittedly, um, was this... so. Given the time that Tintin was created, he wasn't the most politically correct cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, so the books that always get omitted early on were Tintin and the Soviets, which is the very first one published, and Tintin in the Congo. Mm -hmm. And Tintin in the Congo suffers from a lot of cartoon depictions of uh, people of African descent at the mm -hmm. time, we'll just say. And so there were some very negative stereotypes. It was eventually like brought up back into circulation with a lot of disclaimers, like mm -hmm. product of its time, product of its time. And then the thing, the so thing with the Soviets, and it's also because like you know, the Soviet Union stopped being a thing and all that. Not that Tintin in America was that much better, mm -hmm. because it played on Indian stereotypes and all these things, and a lot of yeah, a lot of humor in comics uh, and I guess in general mass media. Uh, did rely on such stereotypes and um, things which are very unacceptable now in the present day. Yeah. Um, so beyond the comics, um, so I'm seeing here that a lot of them are actually originally strips that were later then collected into the books. Mm -hmm. um, and then many, there were two tele animated television adaptations. Yes. And one radio adaptation. Yeah, so I'm unfamiliar with the radio one, which is like, ooh, mm -hmm. intriguing. And I, I've i always like wondered about this. And I think about this because of my continued effort, you know, because I listened to a lot of uh, Audible. Um, is that there's something about Europe and their continued love for audio dramas. Mm -hmm. And that uh, when you listen to like Audible originals, so many, I feel like a significant number of them that I run into are European produced and not necessarily American produced. Mm -hmm. And there's just really something about the audio format that they continue to embrace. So I'm not surprised that there was a radio adaptation. Um, and then there are two cartoons. I'm unfamiliar with the first one because it was a Belgian production. Mm -hmm. And it was like, ooh, the 50s. Yeah. 
And then the second, uh, there was the event, the video game, which was the uh, Adventures of Tintin: Secrets of the Unicorn, which I guess came with the animated film. Yeah, but more importantly, the the second animated series came out in the nineties, mm-hmm. which is also called the Adventures of Tintin, which was the theme song I was trying to hum at the beginning of this episode, mm-hmm. and this was um, glorious. No, I mean I, I I I kid you not. When I first saw it on TV, I could not believe it because it super captured like the action adventure nature mm-hmm. of the comics um on average a single issue would take two episodes to depict mm-hmm. um it had that awesome awesome theme song i super suggest look it up the the theme song for the adventures of tintin cartoon which had no words it's just a score um the only problem i had with the cartoon is that snowy doesn't talk Mm-hmm. So in the interest of time, they had to cut out a lot of material, and thus they had to keep only the dialogue that helps the story move forward. So we lost talking Snowy, um, but uh, but a lot of it went in, and they they were very true to the art style of mm-hmm. the comics. Um, they uh, had great voice talents, I felt, and then the I don't know why the music stands out to me so much. But between the theme song and even the internal scoring for the episodes, while highly repetitive, like there was like uh, Thompson and Thompson did something stupid sound that mm-hmm. you're bound to hear or uh, Tintin sneaking around sort of music. But it worked. It super worked. Um, it was great atmosphere for the, for the series. And I thought that was a really good depiction. Reading up on it, though, they do cite that, uh, what's this? Um... They had to significantly cut down on the violence. And mm-hmm. that's when I think about, oh, yeah, that's one thing you don't always realize. The Tintin comics do not feel like they were written for children. Yeah. There is a lot of violence. There's a lot of murder killing. It's a lot of murder mystery type things mm-hmm. almost always. Um, and it it works. But then I see why, oh, yeah, it had to tone down for the, car- for the cartoon. But I never noticed. Mm-hmm. Like, I just love the fact that Tintin was a cartoon. Okay. Um, so a lot of people were probably more familiar for the more recent Tintin uh, movie. Yes? Yeah. Okay. And that was... Uh, wow, when did that come out? Um, so the movie is listed as having come out in 2011. Mm, wow. 10 years ago. And it was a motion capture thing, you know, project between Steven Spielberg and uh peter jackson who was this is already post you know post lord of the rings so like peter mm-hmm. jackson could do anything he wanted and then it became this tintin thing had and, a star-studded um selection of people working in it yeah steven moffat edgar wright joe cornish were part of the writers uh jamie bell andy circus daniel craig nick frost simon Pegg were part of the voice actors um, and motion capture. So that was the, it's not just a CGI movie, it's a motion capture movie. Which and then is it funny. combines the plots of three different volumes The Crab with the Golden Claws, The Secret of the Unicorn, and Red Rackham's Treasure. And I totally understand why. Because uh, the introduction of Captain Haddock in The Crab with the Golden Claws is such a powerful mm-hmm. thing. And then the secret of the unicorn and red rackham's treasure admittedly is one of the best two part stories in the whole series and i say this despite my love for destination moon and explorers on the moon oh that's something i can highlight very very quickly is that uh um as long as these comics were these were long glossy mm. magazine print comics so to speak um but at the same time he had two part adventures <laughs> which is insane um and for those who are curious the big two part ones are uh was this it starts with the secret of the unicorn and red rackham treasure and then the secret the seven crystal balls and prisoners of the sun are connected destination moon and explorers on the moon are connected so it's like it's all these things that um uh and there's some of the best stuff oh hey mitch mitch is here hello hello mm-hmm. um so so yeah so the and i know i made us watch like a youtube documentary mm-hmm. for the tintin movie so it turns out like they weren't able to it's like it was a project they wanted to do for the longest time but then 
they kept feeling like the technology wasn't there or something or mm -hmm. like they didn't know how to bring it to life and it wasn't until motion capture became such a thing i'm surprised that there wasn't a stop motion effect oh ooh, that's true given you know given the um my brain's now not working, but I'm remembering what it looks like. Little Prince? Um, Little Prince. And then, of course, you have the other one that's more known for stop motion with the dog and the sheep. Tron the sheep. Sorry. But yeah, um, I could argue that that could be also a Wallace and Gromit thing because Tron the too. sheep is actually a character from Wallace and Gromit. So given those, you'd think a thin thin stop motion thing would have happened sooner because um i could imagine the characters done that way in terms of the claymation uh in terms of the the way the expressions would be presented through stop motion mm. so i'm surprised there wasn't one or if there was i'm surprised we didn't really see it but i don't know only because like the weird hyper realism mm -hmm. aspect of sir i mean like you, you it would have to feel practically Dare I say Thunderbirdsy, maybe. So mm -hmm. just full on stop. I mean, stop motion kind of works for the characters. Um, but I don't know about for the stuff. Well, can we scroll back on the movie list? So there's actually a bunch of movies that I've never seen. But it's because they're they haven't been they weren't released in English. So in terms of cinema, there were five feature length films that were made before his death. And then one more in 2011. 2011 being the Peter Jackson, one we know of. Steven Spielberg, yeah. But The Crab with the Golden Claws was released in 1947 and was the first successful attempt to adapt the comics into a feature film. Uh, oh, the stop, stop motion puppet! Now we have to look yeah, and see. We have to find That's this. hard. It's a 1940s uh, movie. There's Tintin and the Golden Fleece. It's first live, live action. action. And not adapted from one of the adventures yeah so it was an original script there is no thing with the, the golden place so there's tintin and the blue oranges a second live action film released due to the success of the first again based on an original script mm -hmm. uh, there's tintin and the temple of the sun the first traditional animation tintin film uh, it adapts the seven crystal balls and prisoners see the it's these two-part books that everybody loves then it's tintin and the lake of the shark the lake of sharks the second animated film and the last tintin release for nearly 40 years so pause so when i was collecting the tintin books as a kid mm -hmm. i was surprised because there was an album whatever comic book album adaptation of the lake of the sharks mm -hmm. in fact the cover depicts it in a film strip and then I it blew my mind that wait, there's a Tintin movie, and uh, of course this is pre-internet time. So then there's no way there was no way to even think about looking for it. And I, 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 I think about it every now and then, but like I haven't really devoted serious efforts to try to find, uh, to try to find it. Okay. So that's something. The first one is on YouTube. Oh my gosh. It's probably not in English. It does say Le Crab of Pri, Pri, Pri says, which is the Crab with the Golden Claws. Yeah, so it starts with an animated intro, but then it goes to the old stop motion. Oh, no, this is the animated. It's animated. It's not, it's not it. It's not it. Yeah, but it's the animated feature that yeah. we were looking for. I, thought, I was looking for the stop motion one because in Wikipedia, there is an image of what it looks like. The yeah. puppet one. You know you're obsessed with the puppet yeah, one. Look at that, look at that, look at that whoa that's super cute okay we okay. have to find this mitch is appreciating our are just talking about this obscure franchise that we super love okay so um uh i forget the i know that the steven spielberg movie wasn't necessarily universally well received mm -hmm. i liked it and i know i'm i'm a little biased as a tintin fan but i appreciate that there was distinct steven spielbergness mm -hmm. to that live action uh, to that not live action but the motion capture movie that it really felt like uh which is he was definitely playing on how tintin if you look at steven spielberg sort of work then mm -hmm. it then it then it works with the other like pulpy action heroes i mean he's practically uh uh indiana jones ish and yeah. so um there's a lot of that action in the movie and uh there are like video essays surprisingly on YouTube that like 
demand people to take a look at that movie again because mm-hmm. it was actually very well thought out and I, I i agree it's like it's worth another look um and i super enjoy it uh mitch mentioned she sees it in singapore because of the tintin boutique stores actually mm-hmm. there's only one official tintin store and it's over in chinatown yes and one of the very first times we went to singapore we, we, went had, we took the train. And that's where we got it. this. And we were kind of freaked out if we were headed the right way. Yeah, yeah. At some point, it was we were, a solo adventure for at us. At some point, we were staring at temples and we're like, are you in the right way? I think this is the road. I think this is it. Yeah, conveniently, if you come out of the Singapore Chinatown station, mm-hmm. you walk a bit, then, then it would be on it. the left. But you have to walk through like this bunch of stores, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Oh, Tristan is over on YouTube. Hey, and then he says he wanted to have adventures like Tintin and a dog like Stoey. I think everybody who fell in love with these comics and these stories wanted and that. that and thing. that's assuming you were willing to have a dog who loved whiskey. Well, okay, that's not his fault. It's because you can't you hang around Captain Haddock enough. Whiskey tends to be everywhere. Okay. <laughs> um, and then oh yeah, then Mitch agreed with the story. And then it became a little easier. It was I'm uh, sorry. It was a bit of a downer, ironically enough, when uh, when fully booked, tied up with the Tintin store franchise, mm-hmm. and then they were able to bring in official Tintin products, and then it was like, eh, I had already spent an arm and a leg at the official Tintin store when it was in Singapore. So, ouchies, ouchies. So that's, but that's okay. That's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. Um. In fact, the photo I used to promote today's episode was our photo of uh, of the wall of comics at mm-hmm. the Tintin Star in Singapore. Okay. Now there is a museum. I know. It kills me. Oh wait, that I think I'm able to grab something. Talk about the museum. <laughs> so the museum's located in the center. Uh, oh, I will not say this. I'll say this wrong. Levain la Neuve. A city to the south of Brussels. Uh, the location was originally chosen for the museum in 2001. The futuristic building was designed um, and co- by a, it was designed by a, by a, a Pritz, Pritzker Prize winning oh, French find. architect uh, and cost around 15 million. Hmm? Uh, oh, I know oh. I have a book. I know I have a book that is a guide to the museum. I forgot where it is. Um, and then I have like the little, the little submarine. Yeah. That's shaped like a whale, which is like I just keep it in a bag, which is from the Tintin shop. It's like the Tintin bag. And then I have a pack of playing cards because why not? And I think it's a game, <laughs> mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. It wasn't just a. Yeah, I'm sure there game. was a game to some extent. Because it does depict scenes, and you try. I think you build sets to try to complete the scenes. Yeah, because it's like, oh, this is funny. Because like it's, uh, Snowy's dirty, and then Snowy goes in the river, and then Snowy gets hit with mud again. And these things are like, so, yeah. And then Snowy's dirty again. So it's it, it's like uh there was it was a story it was a sequential thing which feels more like a a test, but it depicts like all these funny moments from the from the show for uh, from the comic so like you have tintin and snow in the fireplace and something's falling then tintin looks then they both get soot and then they're both dirty but that's like that's and it's like super humorous moments Uh, yeah i should translate this and see how you play it so the museum contains eight permanent galleries displaying original artwork and tells the story of his life and career that would have not been previously visible to the public. The uh, museum also houses a temporary exhibition gallery. Uh, And though Tintin is prominently in the museum, other comic strip characters that he made, such as Zoe, uh, Joe, Zit, and Jocko, as well as Quick and Fluki are Mm -hmm. present. So that's definitely like it's the the list of places I want to go. I mean, like there's the Lego Museum, there's the Tintin Museum. I don't know if like it's gonna stay there forever, but then Mm -hmm. I super super hope. Ha! Tristan says he would recreate Tintin's hair while shampooing. Oh, that's a classic because he had like a weird like twist to the hair. The parangkaulik thing. Yes, yes. Okay. Which I thought they did pretty well in the in the CGI movie. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly. 
enjoyed all these things. So, um, I know you had like you ha- did you see anything interesting on the IMDb trivia page for the movie? I was wondering. So in terms of trivia, um, so of course, uh, the likeness of the the painter at the beginning of the movie yes. is the creator's um, cameo appearance, so to speak. Yes, although he's you know it, it's just his likeness because he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, this was Steven Spielberg's first animated film. Uh, he used a virtual camera in this one, so he starts using it in his other films. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be a live-action adaptation. Um, and he called Peter Jackson to ask if uh, Weta Digital could handle it. But then Jackson was a longtime fan of Tintin and convinced him that live action would not do justice to it. Which is an interesting way to go. And because I think it just recognizes that Tintin's mm-hmm. adventures, while Hergé did have a weird obsession for realistic machines, the adventures themselves were larger than life. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of crazy things. And very well researched. They were very detailed. Oh, yes. I mean, like, uh, the fact that Hergé was able to depict adventures all over the world and captured all these different nuances. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ones in South America really were, like, set in these big Mayan temples and whatnot. And then the then he had Tintin in China, Tintin in America. I mean, it's it's a, it's a lot of detail. Okay. Um. Snowy was still traditionally animated, despite the rest of the film being motion captured. <laughs> um, the film was disqualified for best animated feature film due to the usage of motion capture performance at the Oscars. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. The rule was due to a fundamental misunderstanding of the technology. So, yeah, that's the world. That's a weird thing. Uh, and then if you have, of course, references to different works. A giant rat in Sumatra was a reference to Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah, that we mentioned that the combination, the the location in the opening credits where there's a flip sign at the train station shows various destinations that are all places where the adventures in the comic. Oh, books that's were done. cool. Tibet, the Black Island, Jakarta. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Okay, um, and then. The oh, and then it the really thing. wasn't. So they recognized that Tintin wasn't that big in the U.S., mm-hmm. and so it, it was a bit of a harder sell. And like, what the hell is this big animated feature? But you know, uh, that's a shame. Okay, so it's a lot easier to get Tintin now than before. Yes, that's true. Before it was like I'd have to stalk different national bookstores. And if you find them, you dig through and look for the ones that you don't have yet. Yeah, because then you they were just in this pile. They were not always in good condition. I mean like they always had like slightly curvy corners on the yeah. cover. Um so the majority of my Tintin collection I I pieced together painfully. Mm-hmm. And in fact uh, there's really bad examples of my handwriting in some of them because I got it in, into the mindset that I should write my name on the front page. I remember know? that how, classic, like label your books. I remember how whenever we'd find a new national bookstore, uh, we'd dig through the children's section to see if they have any Tintin books. Mm-mm. And then once you go through it, I'd be like, this one? You're like, no, I have it. This one? No, I have it. This one? <gasps> no, I have it. <laughs> it's frustrating. So uh, I eventually completed the rest of my Tintin collection in my adulthood with Toby, including when they finally re-released Tintin in the Soviets, Tintin mm-hmm. in the Congo, and the Tint- uh, Tintin and the Aleph art, which admittedly, I kind of cried after reading that one because mm-hmm. it, was, it was a lot more introspective than the others. And, um, and because it doesn't end, it's this open-ended thing mm-hmm. then it just makes you all the sadder that you know he passed away and mm-hmm. wasn't able to finish it so uh and, and I, I, maybe i'm just being a bit more emotional about it but that's that, that's me so um but yeah it's so much easier to get it now there are box sets that have them in a smaller print format mm-hmm. i keep looking at my collection wanting to pull stuff out but uh there's a there's a hardbound series about yay tall and yay big mm-hmm. and it compiles three issues at a time because if you count the original like the publicized release order starting from book three 
up until book 23 it was like generally enough to like group them yeah. that way um i'm so happy i have land of the sea land the lake of the sharks because mm -hmm. it 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 doesn't show up as often it's a hard one to it's find. a little harder to find and i have that one um uh good of the but it was good. the ones that you do remember i guess which story do you think you gravitated towards the most I guess we're just, you, it's like yeah, it's the it's mushroom later. or the whatever. I, I I think I I think I want to start try reading through them again just to they're right there. Experience it. Yeah, but that means digging through our. So we weren't able to bring it out because one, uh, there's a lot of other stuff in the way, and two, it's in the bottom of the shelf. So we're kind of worried of affecting the things in the top. Yeah, it's so uh, well, they, they kind of help hold things together. I also have a snowy stuffed toy, but because snowy is white. I am that freak who kept him in his original bag, and then he stored. He's in storage, and I should have should have planned this better and bring out Snowy. But then I'm also like, it's so funny because my Transformers, I can let them get dusty and all that on display, but then Snowy is like protected. <laughs> to be fair, I am the same way about Waddles the pig. I have mm -hmm. a small Waddles yeah. the pig from Gravity Falls, and my my wee bear bear stack. They're still in their stack, but they're in a bag. So. What can you do? Snow is adorable, but he's a bit of a potty mouth. Okay. Um, uh, how would you recommend people to get into Tintin, though? Because finally, oh, sorry. But finally, um, and I remember this because someone commented just today when I posted this, is that they think about Asterisk and like, oh, they super got into Asterisk mm -hmm. and then they remember seeing Tintin. So I never got into Asterisk. And it was sort of the same format in the sense of those the, the, large, the large album The large thing. album book. Um, it wasn't hardbound, but it wasn't. And they were sold, and they were literally in the same section yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of the bookstore. And normally there was a third book. There was Asterisk, there was Tintin, and then there was another one more title that was also large. Mm. I can't remember. The I name. also cannot remember, but I think um, I, I get. Yeah, I remember. There's like. But I remember else. there's always. Wait, wait, wait. Oh no, it's that other one, and then we dropped it. But I remember we used to dig through that, and we'd see it. Um, but yeah. Um, I still feel the books are, you know, you have to dive into the books. You have to see how how the stories are captured in the books. I want to reread. Um, I will do a reread. Yeah, same here. Um, even I'm realizing how I, I, I love, for example, Frank Whiteley's art. And in many ways, Tintin does have that same feel of yes. frozen motion. Um, so, so there's, there, in as much as there are lines to help you know the movement, it's not blur lines. It's more like uh, the punch is done and frozen, but then you see that line that tells you this was the path that Fist took. And that, that was pretty well done in terms of the artwork. Um, there was also this sense of not trying to rush the camera. So there are a lot of scenes where it feels like it's repetitive, but that's because it's playing with the timing so you could see the scene unfolding. And then later it cuts to a closer shot of certain angles because it's then better for the story to twist to that moment so yeah uh i i think the comic ha is a must have to you know you, you must visit the comic you must read it to see and better grasp it are the yes mitch oh you weren't here at the beginning of the episode we're wearing tintin shirts and we got them from the tintin store so i'm gonna like just very briefly some of the things that always stand out was that okay one and i don't know how yeah it's not super clear but again um, the characters are cartoony, but the vehicles, hyper-realistic. Look at that boat. Look at that ship. So he had a bit of an obsession. And then you had these really, like, colorful depictions of motion. His plane crashes, and then he falls in the tree, and then falls down. Snowy falls, and then the first aid kit falls, and mm -hmm. then... And it's, you know, it's this Rube Goldberg machine yes. of things happening. It's not just you punch the guy, but you punch the guy, then he hits the ladder, then the ladder topples over, and it's done nicely in the panels that you can see it happening. And then even this, like, it was a, you can see that they're they're walking, Captain Haddock is whisting in the beginning, and like, aha, this is so easy. And then, oh, he's kind of trailing back, and then now he's the last one, mm -hmm. and all these things. So there was this, it was just great depiction of action. Yeah. And how played for comedy ah see and then like going up and down the stairs 
uh, going up down several flights of stairs. He could have depicted it a different way. He went this way. It's mm-hmm. it's, and then like, just just look at all the little things added to depict speed. Them falling off. They're realizing they're falling off, but then the motorcycle is hyper realistic. Mm-hmm. So that's just like, that's a. Oh, we lost video for a moment. Sorry, didn't realize because we were in the other tab. Um, and then I wonder. Oh, and then like beautiful moments like this. Like, look at this shipwreck. It it's it's gorgeous on the on the page. It's mm-hmm. a large panel thing, and then um, all these little details. The guy was kind of mad, and like the amount of detail he he put into these strips. Um, and it was great for depicting motion and yeah he he depicted motion he had a re, he had a lot of fun with this just depicting the through sequ- it's literally sequential art telling a story completely um and to balance those actions because you'll have pages you know maybe one or two pages it's all like that it's all silent movement with sound effects maybe and at most snowy Mm-hmm. saying something on the side mm-hmm. um but then it will be balanced off with like the villain monologuing <laughs> and it'll literally be like a person and then half the panel is a speech bubble um and all these things but i love the charm of it and i would still i would still highly recommend tintin for young adults mm-hmm. um and even older people only because like they're good uh, a lot of them are good mystery adventures in a way there's always like trying to figure out who's the bad guy, what's really happening, and stuff. And because Tintin is a reporter, Mm-mm. that's why he's like, he will investigate things. He's not a detective, he's a reporter, and he does it better than the actual detectives in the series. And I think that's what um, what helps us connect with Tintin in so many ways. He's, he's like the non-Superman Superman. Mm-hmm. There's that mm-hmm. idealism and Boy Scout nature to the way he does things. He doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to hurt people, but he will defend himself if he has to. He's not selfish. He's still idealistic. But at the same time, he's not naive. He's not stupid. Um, then you have it contrasted with um, Captain Haddock, who's who's boorish and rude and kind of dumb sometimes. But at the same time, they balance each other out and they help each other out. Captain Haddock is literally a Donald Duck. Mm-hmm. He he because he had a, a super mad temper and then he goes nuts and then calculus was a weird addition because he was this reclusive introverted scientist who ultimately accidentally moves in because he can't hear well mm-hmm. he needs a, he literally holds a trumpet to his ear instead of a hearing aid so that he can hear people um and uh, I know in the beginning, like how he becomes part of their, their little household group, whatever, mm-hmm. is that he mishears and he assumes that he's been invited to stay. And then he just stays. Uh, t- Mitch is asking for shirts. Um, okay, Toby's shirt has Captain Haddock mm-hmm. and Tintin. Mm-hmm. And then I have uh, Tintin and Snowy. And then we have one more shirt i have one more shirt which is tintin on the moon yeah the black shirt it's black with the astronaut tintin and it's the classic bubble helmet tintin ah i love that one i love that one so much okay um yeah so uh gosh what else can we cover for tintin Mm. i think um to wrap it up do you want more adaptations or do you just want um remastered of the old stuff i wouldn't mind another maybe a a few a a few more steven Spielberg cgi motion capture movies Mm. because i honestly enjoyed that one i thought it was very well done very well put together and i wouldn't mind a few more of those to kind of round out the stuff Mm -hmm. um i don't know about like uh an anime another animated series because well double checking the one that came out in the 90s so that one lasted three seasons and it actually covered a lot of stories yeah it covered the crab with the golden claws so see that's always like the easy one because it's always the most successful crab with the golden claws secret of the unicorn red rackham treasure mm-hmm. done 
Shikars of the Pharaoh, Blue Lotus, Black Island, and the Calculus Affair kind of stand on their own. Yeah. Shooting Star is funny. The Broken Ear, King Autocar Scepter, Tintin in Tibet. A lot of standalone stuff. Tintin and Picaros, La, 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 Land of Black Gold, Flight 714. My God, I love Flight 714. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Red oh, Sea Sharks. I think I've read Flight 714. They're on a plane. Yeah, yeah, I sort of recall. And then that. the plane gets lost. Okay. Seven Was Crystal Balls. The Triangle, sorry. Yes. Okay, I think I did read that. Prisoners of the Sun, the Castafiore Emerald, Destination Moon, Explorers of the Moon, Tintin in America. So I think the cartoon already covered most of it. Okay. Um, Mitch, any expectation for the series or adaptation? Have fun. Just have fun. And just like embrace the fact that Tintin is uh, he is your daring hero reporter. He's mm-hmm. not a policeman. He has no authority. He doesn't even always have a gun. <laughs> um, but he gets through. And it's really because he's smart and clever and Snowy is the best dog in the world who does brilliant things but will also steal dinosaur bones because mm-hmm. it's a bone. But they're yummy large bones. Yeah, I know. It. I'm pretty sure in French it's like Tantan or something. Yeah, I, I remember that there have been people who have corrected me. Uh, just as Lupin is Lupin. Yeah. Um. So uh, I'll just play this to see. Uh, wait, let me first The mute. French pronunciation. Let's just, let's just mute first my audio and uh, the yeah. playbacks so we don't feedback. And then let's go back to that one. Activating our speakers and let's hear it. So let's practice so you record. So just play the speaker. Yeah. Oh, it's, it still says Tintin. It says Tintin. Oh, but it says but, American pronunciation. Okay, let's do British pronunciation. Tintin. <laughs> just slow down. And then There's let's no see French. the French pronunciation. That's no, more Tan Tan. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's like it's an adventure series. Uh I know that the cartoon can be found in places, Mitch. I'm sure you can find it. And then we may eventually explore some of the stuff that's like flying around YouTube. Um but oh my god, if you but if you enjoy the cartoons, which is like the probably the easy mm-hmm. access or the movie, you gotta read the comics eventually because they're good stuff. I hope they don't do a live action. Yeah. Admittedly, a the large, CGI thing worked. And a large part of the charm is the look. I mean, look, look, look at that look. Um, in as much as you could say the, the CG movie already found a way to do it as a more realistic interpretation, um, I think that's the closest I'm willing to accept it going away from how I see it. Because mm-hmm. it, it's such an iconic look to the character and Mm -hmm. and yeah you don't want to go away from it and let's face it we all know how avatar ended up looking like when they tried to convert it to live action yeah (laughs) oh it's just go fish yeah (laughs) because it's a set collection game yeah yeah just set collection try to complete the four cards of your story and then you know as you pass pass and then you bring it down when you completed it I forget have I have I logged this in our board game geek? I should Probably get not. more of these. Okay. Uh yeah, so I hope I guess that... my last question is this. Oh, okay, okay. If Snowy talked in the movie, who would it be? Because I know the animated film had Andy Circus. But then I'm sorry, and sorry, the animated film had Andy Circus as Captain Haddock. Mm-hmm. And he was joking that he should be Snowy, but that didn't happen. Who would you see I don't as know. a snowy voice? I'm not good with like singing voices. Is he, a, uh, is he a, a nosy British voice? Is he a squeaky young I, voice? Yeah, I kind of always, I don't know, feel like, because there's, because, okay, there's a lot of panels of snowy wailing. And, yeah, yeah, but, but when he has his full dialogue, when he's complaining about things to the reader, um, what's the voice you hear? Probably like, I don't know close to mickey mouse or something i don't know it's like <laughs> because it was a there's an intelligence to it but mm-hmm. it, but i needed like a bit more with a snarky edge mm-hmm. so i don't mind because you know you know how some depictions of mickey can be like quite cheeky you know mm-hmm. and like 
So that's, I don't know. So I, I don't know why I think Mickey. It's something like that. Something like that. I, I just need like I need a a, a, a spunky, snarky voice. Mm-hmm. He's not intelligent. He's not high class Britishy, I guess, in that sense. But mm-hmm. he's um he's spunky and and he's always like, Why are you making me do this? you know. But then you know, but he's super loyal to Tintin, so there it's not even a question. So yeah. If I if, ooh, if I can if I can take time off on Monday, then I I don't know maybe I'll dig up a Tintin and read because it's always good to read Tintin. It it's it's funny though, yeah. Because when we first when in the early years of Toby and I getting together, that was like one of my first mm-hmm. like things to hunt down. I don't know yeah. why I don't know how it started, but it was a decision that I want to I want to I want to complete my Tintin collection, mm-hmm. and then we just kept going. We just visited bookstore after bookstore after yeah, bookstore that's true and in kubao oh boy in kubao when we go hunting we go to even national bookstore there was that there's that yeah. super big national there was the smaller bookstores and then there was the one in kubao x where you have all these oh, old the, stuff the antique stores and, and dig whatnot. through in case they had their ah yeah i think my main problem like with my collection so to speak is that one i have the three in one version of the crab with the golden claws red rackham treasure mm-hmm. and the seven crystal vaults i think or yeah it's like uh, the secret of the unicorn and and red rackham treasure so it's in a different format mm-hmm. and then my tintin in the congo because the only way it's been released that i was able to find is a hardbound yeah the edition. Thing. so it kind of irks me sometimes that they're not all the same and that i don't know but i keep telling myself that's fine like live with it it's, it's fun the story is more important mm-hmm. but maybe i will like optimize over time and then i have a bunch of uh history of the the tintin reference book of and oh my god i have all these things the life of herge and um fun stuff but please please uh if you want to celebrate my birthday with me in any way one of the quirkier ways apart from like i so i can't even get people to like i won't universally recommend transformers i can't Mm -hmm. I won't be the one to tell you to read Dune because it's a hard book to read. Mm-hmm. But if there's anything you would do to like do a rocky thing for my birthday, it's read Tintin. Read Tintin or watch the movie or watch the animated series. Because I love I I have the biggest thing for Tintin that I don't necessarily stress enough uh on the show and, and things because I always feel like was nobody else reading Tintin. <laughs> That that's how my life was like. There's nobody else reading Tintin, and I'm the I only think one. It was a price point. It was, really, it was expensive. It's really expensive to get it. I super thank my mother for supporting my reading habit. My mom, my mom's approach to like how to get your kids to read is that we pick a book was an event. Anytime that we were at a bookstore, could get one book, mm-hmm. and I that's how I built up my Tintin collection issue by issue, mm-hmm. piece by piece. It was years. Before I got to read the end of the moon story, I only had Destination Moon, and then I didn't have Explorers of the Moon. I think the next one I got was Cigars of the Pharaoh, which is like so disorienting now. What 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 what, what happened? Where am I? Um, so if you have a chance, oh my god, please 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 enjoy an adventure of Tintin with us, uh, and and I hope that you have fun. If there is a book. I would uh, recommend that might stand on its own. Ooh, that's just, actually it's, that is a tricky question I have tried to present myself for. Um, um, because the, the really good ones are the two parts, which means it's Secret of the Unicorn and Red Rackham Treasure, Seven Crystal Balls and Prisoners of the Sun, Destination Moon, Explorers of the Moon. But um, admittedly, ones that may stand out I think the broken ear wasn't that bad, actually. That was a pretty good, solid adventure. The shooting star, I don't know why it made me laugh so mm-hmm. much. Just the just the notion of these big red, white and red mushrooms, mm-hmm. the way they're depicted in the comic, I was laughing. I was super laughing. So that's a good that's a good example. Um, and then uh, um, Tintin in Tibet is like kind of heartwarming heart heartbreaking because tintin goes to tibet to rescue a friend from a previous book um 
the Castafiore Emerald is a deep cut. Like you can't appreciate it if you don't know who Bianca Castafiore is across the book mm-hmm. series. Flight Seven One Four to Sydney is very powerful. Um, it's a good it's a good story too. But I also feel like it pays off more if you know the characters more. So it's it's a there is a specific reading order. They're not all interconnected, but it really helps if you read them in the right order. Okay. All right. Anything else, Toby? I guess that's it. I guess that's it. That wraps up our episode on the adventures of Tintin. And we hope you enjoyed this episode and join us again next time. For questions or suggestions for future episodes, feel free to fill up the Google form on bit.ly Badu Pride Ideas. Thanks again to Pico for suggesting this because some time back he was asking me, Rocky, I want to get into Tintin. Where do I begin? And then I had to say, oh, 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 oh. Let me help you. Okay. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, Altobi No Shade, RG Suniko. You could also check out our blog, BadayPride.com, for all the previous episodes and stuff about us. Feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below and let us know. Were you a Tintin fan? Were you one of the rare people who read the books with me? Um, or are you just going to try it now? I promise you won't regret it. Um, let us know. And be sure to subscribe for notifications, whether on Facebook or YouTube. So you don't miss our next live stream. Once again, I'm Rocky. And I'm Toby. And, And this, this is Badoy Pride. Pride. Good night, everyone. <laughs>